So this is video number two, and we're picking up right where we left off, number 11, on this practice test. Now, as you can see, number 11, they tell you to find the value of r, so there's a missing uh, value right here, right? It's a variable r, and we need to know what number belongs right here, uh, so that when we calculate the slope on these two points, we actually get the answer m equals 1 fourth, okay? So um, how do we usually find a missing value when we know other values, you create an equation, okay? So let's start out by writing what we know. And here's the slope formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Uh, you need to know that formula um, in order for you to work out this uh, slope uh, problem. Now we need to label our coordinates. So our first coordinate is the x1 value and the y1 value. Our second coordinate is the x2 value and the y2 value. Maybe I should zoom in a bit more. Um, so let's rewrite our formula, but plugging in our values. So again, whenever you use a formula, I always say do the division first and the subtractions, and then plug in your y2, which is 5, your y1, which is 3, your x2, which is r in this case. That's weird. Actually, let me put that in red so you could see that missing value r. We're going to solve for r right now. And then uh, our x1 value, which is negative 4. Now, what is this? This is slope, right? This is a slope formula. So as you can see, the slope formula up here, it says m equals. So this whole thing equals m, okay? So I could put the equals m on this side, or I could put equals m on this side, any side. Um, but remember that m is really 1 fourth. So I'm going to put this whole formula equals the slope, which in this case is 1 fourth. How do I know that? Because they tell us that m equals 1 fourth. So what we have here is an equation. Um, before we start solving this equation, let's start simplifying. Um, the minus minus changes the plus plus. So we end up with the r plus 4 on the bottom. So let's do this. Let me rewrite this complicated looking equation, um, but simplifying and rewriting. So 5 take away 3, that's 2. So I have a new equation that says 2 over r plus plus 4, that's just r plus 4, equals 1 over 4. Okay? So what do we have here, guys? We have a proportion. We have one fraction equaling another fraction. So what do we do when we have one fraction equaling another fraction? Cross multiply! Sa -sa. Remember that? Okay, I don't know if you do or whatever. Let's just move on. Uh, we're going to cross multiply, okay? Uh, so that means 2 times 4 is going to equal r plus 4 times 1. And remember, whenever you have a binomial, when you have more than one term, binomial or trinomial, let's put it in parentheses when you cross multiply. So setting up this cro cross multiplying situation, you're going to say 2 times 4, and let's write that, 2 times 4 equals r plus 4 in parentheses times 1 r plus 4 in parentheses times 1. But then again, r plus 4 times 1, anything times 1 is the same thing, so it's not going to change. So our new equation, simplified equation, is 2 times 4, that's 8, equaling r plus 4. Remember, times 1 times 1 doesn't change it, it stays r plus 4. So we have a simple equation that says 8 equals r plus 4. What do I do next? I subtract 4 to get r by itself. My final answer is 4 equals r. So they were asking for the missing value that would give you the slope 1 fourth. Okay? So what's that missing value r? It's 4. If you have a 4 right here and he did slope, you would get the answer 1 fourth. And you could test it by saying, okay, if r is 4, let's take that 4 and put it right there where the r is at. So that would be 4 plus 4, that's 8, right? And then 5 take away 3, that's 2. So 2 over 8, that reduces down to 1 fourth. So you double checked it. That's the work to do on number 11. It's a lot of work. There's only one problem of these on the whole test. Um, but if you're going for that A+, plus, you need it. Remember, each problem is 5%. It's a 20-question test. So do your best. There's only one of those questions. So there's a couple of these questions, and I'm sure you're glad that there's a couple of these questions. It says, write an equation of the line in slope-intercept form. And again, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. 
And uh, why do we call it slope intercept form? Because if it's in slope intercept form, you could see the slope, the blue M, and you could see the Y intercept in the red B right there, okay? So slope intercept form is Y equals MX plus B. So you need two things to be able to write an equation in slope intercept form. You need the slope, you need the intercept. Those are the two things that you need. You need the M and the B. Uh, I said you're gonna love these problems because they give you the M and they give you the B, right? What is the M here? Well, the M is 2 thirds. What is the B here? The B is negative five. So let's write our equation. Y equals MX plus B, 2 thirds X plus B. But in this case, it's not plus five, it's actually a negative five. So I wanna write minus five. If you put plus negative five, that would be okay. But the multiple choice answer will be written as minus five, not plus negative five, even though it means the same thing. These are like easy points, free money right here, guys. Uh, what's this equation gonna be? It's gonna be y equals uh, one half, or not one half, one fifth. That's your slope, x uh, plus b. What's the b value? It's a four, so plus four. Okay, once again, your m is slope, your b is your y-intercept. So you just plug in the m right here and the b right here, m, b, simple. Let's move on to number 14. This equation will be y equals mx, which is negative 7 thirds x plus b plus 5. You see, it's easy. Okay, so that's the front page of the practice test. We already did more than half of the test. Let's move on to the back page. On the back side, back side! Okay, no, I'm sorry. Uh, on the back side, we're gonna do, uh, that was just to wake you up. Um, we're gonna be doing writing equations. Same thing, uh, uh, on the other side we were doing, I gave you the M, I gave you the B, you were able to write it in Y equals MX plus B form, right? So once again, on the other side, I gave you the slope and you just put it right here. And then I gave you the B and you just put it right here and you have your equation. So if they give you the M and the B, it's the easiest thing in the world to write the equation in slope-intercept form. All you have to do right here on these graphs is identify your M value and then identify your B value, which by the way is the easiest to identify because you just look at where it crosses the y-axis. And then with those two bits of information, you could write your equation in Y equals MX plus B form. So like I said, the easiest thing to fi find is the B value. And as a matter of fact, when you graph equations, you start with the B value anyway. So what is the B value? The B value is two. Remember the B value is the Y-intercept value. Here's the Y-axis. It doesn't cross down here. It crosses up here at the value of two. So your Y-intercept value is two. Let's talk about slope now. Now, in order for you to identify slope, again, you need to look at lines from left to right. So. Here's where it begins, or not where it begins, but how you're looking at it. From left, going to right, what's happening? Is it going down or is it going up? It's definitely going down. Now, there are suggested points. This point they suggest and this point they suggest, okay? Um, so from this point to this one, left to right, it's going down, obviously, so your rise is gonna be negative. Remember, your slope value is really a fraction. Rise over run and your rise, if it's going up from left to right, it's gonna be positive. If it's going down from left to right, it's gonna be negative. But we're always looking at lines the way we read sentences from left to right. So the run always is gonna be positive, okay? So how much does it go down from this point to that point? You're going down one level, two levels, three, four, five, six. So that would be a negative six on the rise, negative six on the rise. And on the run, if you, after going down six, how much do you go over? You go over one, two. So negative two, I mean not negative two, just two on the run. Remember, run's always positive. You're always looking at it from left to right. So your slope is negative six over two, uh, but you're not gonna see that on the multiple choice. They're gonna actually simplify it as much as possible. So if you could reduce the fraction, please do so. In this case, you could actually divide negative six by two. That'll give you negative three, okay? Uh, anyhow. Uh, you did not have to use the suggested points, right? You could have used this point and the next clean point. The next clean point would be right here. And as you could see, if you were to use those two points, you go down one, two, three, which is negative three, over one, 
So if you did put it over 1, it would still be negative 3. So you could calculate the, point, the slope using any two points on the line, any two nice points on the line. Let's write our equation. Sorry, I took this too long, or too long to do this problem. So y equals m, which is negative 3, x plus b plus 2. There's your equation. y equals mx plus b. Of course, you could put it over 1 if you wanted to, but the multiple choice is not going to put it over 1. So that's what you're going to see on the, on the test tomorrow. Let's look at this one right here. Again, it's really easy. What is your m? Pick two points. How much do you rise? You actually are from left to right. You really are rising. You're going up. So that is a positive rise from left to right. So from here to here, you're going up. How many levels? One, two, three. So that's a positive three on the rise. That's a positive three on the rise. How about the run? The run's always positive. So from this point to this point, they run one, two levels. So the run is two. So that's your slope. How about the B value? That one's the easiest to calculate because you just look where it crosses on. That's three. So what's your y equals mx plus b equation? y equals 3 over 2x uh, plus 3. Done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Simple as popping a pimple in a dimple. That is gross. OK, uh, let's move on here. Let's uh, find the slope. Again, the slope and the y-intercept. Now, let's start with the, uh, the y-intercept. It's the easiest thing to do. Where does it cross? That crosses at negative 2. That's all we need for the y-intercept. Let's look, find the b. Let's compare two points, the ones they suggest. So from this point to that point, from left to right, is it going up or is it going down? It's going down, so we know it's going to be negative rise. How much does it go down? It goes down 1, 2 units. How much do you run? 1, 2, 3. So because you're going down 2 units, that's a negative 2 rise, and the run's always positive, and we said we ran 3 units. Now that we know our m and our b, we're going to have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus b. But in this case, we're not going to put plus negative 2. We're just going to put a minus 2 right there. And that is your equation for that graph right there. Let's move on. How about this guy right here? Again, let's find the m and the b. The easiest one to find is the b value. Where does this, what, what is the b value? Where does it cross the y-axis? It doesn't cross up here. It crosses, whoa, wait a minute. It crosses way down here at that location. So what is that location right there. Well, that location is negative 3 on the y, so your b value is negative 3. Now for your m value, let's compare two points. You could do this one and that one, or you could say the ones they suggest. Either way, from left to right, are you going up or are you going down? You're going down, so that means you have a negative rise again, a negative slope again. So from here to here, how, much, how many levels does it go down? It goes down 1, 2, 3 levels. So that is a negative 3 is a rise. Negative 3 is the rise. And how much do you run from this level to this level? How much do you go over? After you go down 3, how much do you go over? You go over, over 1. So that's negative 3 over 1. So your slope is negative 3 over 1, which is just negative 3. And your b is negative 3. So what's our y equals mx plus b equation? y equals negative 3 over 1. But you're not going to see it on the, on the multiple choice. It'll just be negative 3 x and then minus 3 at the very end. And that's it. Let's move on. This next section, they want us to graph. <clears throat> Sometimes there's going to be a one question, at least, where they tell you the slope and the y-intercept. That's easy peasy. Where does it cross the y-axis? The y-intercept is 4. So I'll put it at 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. Now from that point, what's your slope? Well, your slope is negative 6 over 5. Don't get confused with the minus sign being in the middle. Always put it on top, never on the bottom. The rise could be positive or negative. The run is always positive. So that negative sign really belongs to the 6. So from this point, you need to know your steepness. How does it cross? Is it really steep going up? Is it kind of steep going up? Is it kind of steep going down? Or really steep going down? Well, you need to know, look at your steepness, the slope. So from this point, you're going to go down because it's negative. You'd be going up if it were positive. You're going down because it's negative, 6 units and over 5. So down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're right on the edge. So let's put a dot right there. Connect our dots. And voila, put some arrows. We're done. We graphed it. Free points, guys. Everybody should ace tomorrow's test. Now, these next two... They want us to graph the following equations. Now, uh, 
the easiest way is to get in y equals mx plus b. And as you can see, this guy is not in y equals mx plus b form. You need to get y by itself. You don't want that multiplication of 3 in front of the y. So let's divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. My new slope intercept form equation is y equals negative 2 thirds with an x uh, plus 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So now that we have it in slope intercept form, it's really easy to graph. What's the b value? The b value is 3, crosses at 3 right here. And what do I do from that point? Do I go up, up two units or down two units? Obviously down because it's a negative. If it were positive 2 thirds, it'd be going up 2 over 3. But it's negative 2 thirds, so you're going to be going down 2 over 1, 2, 3. Put a dot right there, and we are good. Connect the dots, and we're done. Put some arrows on it. Ta da Now this next one is not in slope intercept form. And we could get it in slope intercept form if we wanted to. All I'd have to do is subtract 4x, subtract 4x, and divide by uh, 2, and divide everything by 2, and I'd have y equals mx plus b. And that's a way to do it. Or maybe you want to uh, apply last week's skill. Since it's in standard form, you might want to apply last week's skill and, uh, and do uh, x and y intercepts, right? So let's do that just for a review of x and y intercepts. So I would start out by uh, writing x int and y int, and then you need to know this. How do you find the x-intercept? You set y equal to 0. I always do that in all my work. And how do I find the y-intercept? You set x equal to 0, OK? So if I rewrite this uh, standard form equation, but I set y equal to 0, it's going to read 4x plus 2 times 0 equals 4. Now, we all know that 2 times 0 is 0. It just disappears. So you have the equation. You really have the equation 4x equals 4. And how do you get rid of that 4 in front of the x? You divide by 4. And you divide by 4. So your x equals 1. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your x-intercept. Where does it cross the x-axis? It crosses at 1. You put a dot right there. Okay. And now let's go for the y-intercept value. How do you find the y-intercept value? Set x equal to 0. Whoops, probably shouldn't have actually wrote on that. Let's actually set x equal to 0. So let's say 4 times x, 4 times 0, uh, plus 2y equals 4. So 4 times 0 is nothing. You could scratch it out. You really have the equation that says positive 2y equals 4. In other words, 2 times y equals 4. So how do you get rid of the multiplication of 2? You divide by 2, divide by 2 y equals 2. And what do we find here? We found the y-intercept. So go to your y-axis, go to the y-value of 2, and put a dot right there. So now that you have the x-intercept and the y-intercept, you have technically two points on the line. And you could graph that line right through those two points. And all you got to do is put arrows on it, and you're good. That's how to graph. Let me do this in red. OK, uh, was there a other way of doing it? Yeah, you could have. Uh, subtracted the 4x and subtracted the 4x. And you could have rewritten it as uh, 2y equals uh, 4 minus 4x, but let's write it negative 4x plus 4. That would be better. And then you could divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals negative 2x plus 2. That means that your b value is 2, and it does cross at 2. And you would go down 2 over 1, because you want it in the form of rise over run. So you would go down 2 over 1. So you see, you get the same exact graph. It's totally up to you if you want to use x and y intercepts with standard form, or if you want to rewrite it in slope intercept form and then graph using y equals mx plus b. Let's move on. So you will have some graphing on this test, um, but you're not actually going to be going through the whole process. The graphs are going to be done for you. So all you need to do is identify, oh, my b value is 3, and I drop 1 and over 3 from that point. So you need to look at four different graphs and compare. And of course, you're looking for the b value of 3 and the fact that you're dropping 1 and going over 3. So go down one level over 1, 2, 3. You would put a dot right there, connect the dots, and you're done. The next one, y equals negative 4 and x equals 3. A lot of people freak out right there. It's just simple. Remember, y equals a number will give you a horizontal line. That means side to side at the y value of negative 4. So I already know that if I go to negative 4 and I put a dot right there and I do a horizontal line right through it, 
I have my graph. Now, if you have x equals a number, uh, you go to your x value at that uh, value of three, x axis, go to the x axis at that value of three, and then draw a vertical line. Okay, it's a shortcut that we learned last week. So if you have y equals a number, it's a flat line, left to right. If you have x equals a number, it's a vertical line, up and down. Remember that. Now, even if you don't remember, you could go back and resort, resort to an input-output table. And the only thing that this cares about is that your y values are negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. And if you put any numbers, 0, 1, negative 2, if you put any numbers on the x, because there are no x's, you could see that uh, uh, you get this flat line. Like 0, negative 4, that point is right here. Uh, 1, negative 4, that's right here. Negative 2, negative 4, it's over here. So you do get that flat line crossing the y-axis at negative 4. Same thing with the x's. Over here, x equals 3. That means 3, 3, 3 on the x's. And y's, since there's no y's, you can put whatever you want. 1, 2, negative 3, I don't know. Uh, if you go 3, 0, that's right here. If you go 3, 2, that's up here. If you go 3, negative 3, that's down here. Obviously, you get that vertical line. So those are really easy. This one right here, you want to graph it. It's not in slope-intercept form yet. All you have to do is subtract 4, subtract 4. Let's rewrite the whole thing. Y equals the slope is going to be negative 3 over 2 with an x on the side, and then minus 4 at the very end. That's my b value. So you start with minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down here at the negative 4 on the y. Now from that point, you're going to go down 3 over 2. Now some people are going to get confused right here because when I go down 1, 2, 3, oh, I'm off the graph. I can't do that. Yes, you can. All right? Let's actually, let's do that. This is not going to be perfectly accurate, but let's just say you went down 1, 2, 3, and then over 1, 2. Let's put a dot right there, okay? So once again, you could just kind of sketch it 1, 2, 3, and then over 1, 2. So that's your line right there, but this line is off the graph, right? So let's extend it to the left. So let's use the same pattern, which is negative 3 over 2. So you went down 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2. Let's go backwards. 2 this way, up 1, 2, 3. So 2 this way, up 1, 2, 3, and put a dot right there. See, it's really easy uh, to, to use that pattern, but backwards. One, two, okay, so the, the pattern is negative 3 over 2. So you went down 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2. Backwards, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Over 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So we could take this line uh, as long as we want it to be. We can make it as long as we want it to be by following that same slope pattern. Guys, this is a super long video. I apologize. But that is everything you need to know for this last 100-point break. Break? Test. Test. It is the last 100-point test before Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Gobble, gobble.